right, tremendous job on our services page. And now it's time to create our contact page where we're gonna learn how to create and insert a pretty Google form, which will take up most of this white space on the page and which your audience can use to send you inquiries about your business or your services or to send you feedback. And we're also gonna learn how to track that feedback and those responses in a spreadsheet. And of course, because it's a Google product, it's all for free. One thing us WordPressers don't realize sometimes is that WordPress and Google products work perfectly together. And even though we're using WordPress to build our website and not a Google product like Blogger, a lot of Google's products are actually made just for WordPress. They're made to be inserted into WordPress and they look the best on WordPress. All right, so let's simplify our tabs and then hop over to Google Forms, which starts in Google Drive. If you don't have a Google Drive account, you can just Google Google Drive. And at this point, I'm pretty sure that having a Gmail will give you access to Drive. You'll just need to log in with your Gmail account. And once you see this nice screen, we can click Go to Google Drive. And it'll just open up everything that I've made and shared in Google Drive. And once you get to this sort of screen, if you're new to it, this will of course be uh, somewhat more empty. You might have a few demo folders at the top. But what we want to click is New. And then in More, we want to click the purple icon for Google Forms. I shouldn't say purple because they'll probably change that icon right when I say it. All right, very nice. So the first thing we want to do is title our form we can click on the untitled form text and then write would you like to adopt and just like everything we make in this tutorial the purpose is to find an adopter for Leroy but I hope that doing this all with a real purpose will help you come up with your own ideas when you create your own website features like the Google form alright so now we can also have a form description I want to click there and write just a little instruction for people. Please complete this form and hit submit because that's what we want people to do with this form. We want to be really clear with what we want them to do. And at the same time, I'm also going to make sure that this is capitalized. Would you like to adopt? That looks more professional. All right, now I want to just change the background color so we can look at something a little prettier as we build our form. To do that, we can click on color palette and then click in the lower right, this little mountain icon, and we can select our theme. My favorite themes are in the travel section, and you can just choose something that suits your website in your contact form. All right, these parks are pretty cool. People like taking their pets to the park, although I also like this moving stream. That's nice, too. And once you found the right theme, just hit select and it will automatically change. There we go. To add a new section, we just need to hit plus. And then to change the type of section, you can use the drop down. For some reason, it chooses multiple choice for me right away. And instead, we want short answer. And for this question, it's just full name. To make this section required, which it is, we can hit the required checkbox. And if you ever want to delete a section, like the section that Google created for us, just hit delete. Let's hit the plus icon again for a new section. And here we want people to write in their email. And it's required. And it's not multiple choice, it's short answer. Now we want to hit plus again, and this section actually is multiple choice because the question is, have you raised a kitten before? See if they have any experience. And for the options, we want to change those to yes, and then click add option, and then write no. And this part is also required. All right, now we just need a couple more short answers for people to fill out, so plus add question, change to short answer, and then what zip code do you currently live in so that we can know if people are nearby or if they're gonna have to travel far to come and adopt. 
I'd actually prefer that the adopter live close by because then we can stop by and say hello to the kitties every now and then. And this is required. One more short answer, so plus. And when are you available to adopt? So you get the picture here. And this is all going to be customized with your own amazing content. Short answer. And then at the end, it's customary to give people a large text box so they can write us a message or ask questions or just basically feel like they get to say whatever they want. So plus paragraph instead of short answer. And then we'll give people a little prompt. So I'm going to write in 300 words or less, please explain what makes you a good candidate and it did for adoption. Exclamation mark. And that's required. And that last session will be optional just because some people don't like saying very much or don't know what to say. And we want to get a lot of responses. Let's double check to make sure our form looks good and doesn't have any typos. And I already found one. And hit submit. And once you're happy with your form, come to the top and click send. And now we don't want to send this form to anyone because we don't have any collaborators at the moment. We just want to click these two arrows to embed the form into our WordPress website. In this section, we can also customize the height of the form. And I know that we want it about three times as tall as it comes right away. So 1500 pixels is good. And then we just need to click copy and hit copy or right click copy. Now we're ready to insert the form into our website. Just come back to our blank contact page, edit page, and now in the text tab because we're pasting in a piece of code, just paste. And we'll see we have our second iframe in our website. The first iframe of course came from YouTube. So our second piece of Google content. Let's update and hopefully this page looks good. And now view page. And we can see that the Google form displays nicely. We can see the whole form because we increased the height of it. And people can go ahead and fill out their name like Joe and their email like joe at gmail.com. And then they'll get prompted to answer the questions. And once they're done filling out their stuff, they can hit submit. And they'll get a message saying your response has been recorded. But where is that response been recorded? How do we view that response? Well, I'll show you. If we go back to our Google form and X out of this screen, and we can just click the responses button where we now have our first response to our form. Once you get this screen, in summary, you'll see a summary of what sorts of answers you got, whether it's yes or no, and what they said. Or you can click individual. And what we want to do is click create spreadsheet, because that'll show the info in a spreadsheet. And we're going to title this. Responses for adoption should do. And click create. And now Google will automatically put our data and our responses in a spreadsheet and we can change them. Like instead of timestamp, you might want date sent and you can change everything like the widths and so on and so forth to your heart's content so that you can easily read your responses or maybe send them off to your secretary or your assistant to read and to compile for you to read later. So that's pretty cool guys, you now know how to create a Google form and how to collect your responses from that Google form in your own spreadsheet all for free. All the changes will be saved dynamically which we can see by this link right here. And now before you leave this screen, what I want you to do, and this part is important, is just to go to tools, notification rules, and make it so that you get emailed right away when someone hits submit on your form and sends you a response. So just select notify me at your email when a user submits a form and email right away and then click 
and save. And done. Great job. We can also go back to questions and because Google operates dynamically if you ever change anything on the form like maybe you want to write full name with a capital N or some bigger sort of change then it will save dynamically and that just means that when you refresh the form on your site you'll see the changes right away. Pretty cool. Our contact page is almost done. We just need some text at the top to tell people what to do because sometimes people just don't know. So let's hit edit page and click to the left of the iframe. Just give ourselves a little space and you can do this in the text tab or the visual tab, whatever you're more comfortable with. I'll go to visual and see how we can move that form down a little. And now just write out what you want people to do on your contact page. I've already written some copy which I can paste. Alright, just telling people what to do and that we recommend filling out the form as soon as they're ready because the process may be done on a first come first serve basis. Lastly, if you want to make an email clickable so that when someone clicks it, it'll open up their email client of choice on their computer and they can just start typing an email, just highlight the email address you write in and click link. And WordPress will know to make that a mail to link and you can just hit apply and we're all done. Now let's update view page and we'll see that our contact page is finally done. People can now start using it and you can start gathering responses for your business. And if we click that email, it'll just open up a new Gmail. All right, great job, great progress. And next, we're going to set up our blog page so that our website has a complete blog feature. Hope you're excited. I'll see you there.